the mental ability to make a choice. That's what makes us human, I think. Free will is what we think we're doing when we choose. Free will is being able to choose exactly what you want to do, when you want to do it, within the realms of, of responsibility and within the boundaries and borders. It's one of the greatest gifts that God has given us. Free will is knowing that you're exactly where you need to be and, uh, and realizing how to, how to get to, to the place you need to go. You see, that, that question is such, a, such an important question because that's the difference. That's whether you're going to be a, a, a hero, whether you're going to help mankind, whether you're going to be a, a great human being or you're going to be a drunk or a, 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 an evil um, a, a machiner. Uh, it, it's all in the free will. Everybody knows that. And then they, they don't bother to find out what the heck is free will. It has something to do with good and evil because that's the result. Either you're going to be a good man or an evil man according to what you use your free will. But who in the world chooses to do evil? <laughs> there might be some weirdos out there. But you ask all your friends and everybody that you know, did you ever say, hey, do you got an evil deed for me to do today? Yeah? And we know that we do do good. We'll die to do good. Because it's the right thing to do. You've got to do the right thing. What can I do? I'm stuck with it, whether we like it or not. Good is the lack of evil. Good uh, is righteousness. A lot of different people have different definitions. Different cultures have different definitions of good. Something that doesn't hurt others. A really large spoon and a pint of Ben & Jerry's peppermint cookie Oreo cream ice cream. Good. Is a uh, Hagen does cookies and cream ice cream. Great is a baby being born into the world. Evil is something we should keep away from. When someone chooses uh, to be bad purposefully. When you see someone that's in trouble and you need to help him, he needs help, but uh, you don't, you don't help him. Evil is distraction. Evil is negative intention, harmful intention. Since I don't really believe in true evil, I don't think there are truly evil people in the world. I think that there are a lot of sickos in the world, though. Another evil would be Hitler, whose sole purpose was to torture and kill people just because who they are. That's, that's, that's evil. I don't think anyone on the psychological makeup is 100% evil. Even Hitler liked dogs. Yes, I think there's a lot of evil people in this world but that everybody um, has free will and so he can, a person is able to, to make something better of himself and change. I can't think of something truly evil at this, right now. I, I, I'm in a good mood. <laughs> so where is free will? Now remember, if you have free will, when do you use it? It's not when you have a, a terrible temptation like to stick it out in bed and say the heck with the world or maybe make an end of it all. And it's, a, it's a constant temptation, good or evil. So what is the temptation? It's in Judaism, in our Torah, it's amazing, the definition of free will is to choose between life and death. Now the Torah isn't a dictionary. The Torah is, teaches us by usage. In all of the five books of Moses, there isn't one... There, there's only one place where it says to choose. And that is where it says, I put before you today, look, see, be aware. I put before you today good and evil, life and death, a blessing and a curse. Choose to live so that you may live. So choose life over death. That is what free will is about. You say, that's ridiculous. The evil people, evil don't want to die, you know. A man that everybody will agree is an evil man, everybody agrees is an evil man, is Idi Amin, if you remember the guy. He was an evil man, he would torture people for his entertainment. I mean, this guy was bad. But everybody knows that that man, Idi Amin, had a genius for survival. So if somebody threw a grenade through the window, yeah, and we'd all be standing here, and this grenade is, is going to explode, you can be sure the first guy out the door and three blocks away would be Idi Amin. While one of the poor guys would blow up, yeah? 
he had a genius for survival, so he wanted to live. So what does it mean, choose between life and death? So in order to understand this, you go, you go to the extreme, and the extreme is a suicide. What is the motivation of a suicide? Why is it that he's taking his life? The guy loses $50 million in the, in the stock market, and he's going to jump. So you say, wait, wait, well, one moment, can we get a statement from you? You know, the television crew is there, and he's going he's gonna to wait, set up your cameras, okay, I'll get my last interview, come on, hurry up. You say, why are you going to jump? He lost $30 million, $50 million. You know what it means to lose $50 million? So the reporter says, well, do you have any money left? Well, I have my home in Switzerland, and I have this uh, plane, and I have, I, mean, I guess I can sell the stuff for three and a half million. Three and a half million? The guy says, I can live with three and a half million. Ah, you don't know what it means to lose 50 million. Uh, he says, well, if you stuck around, could you make it back again? <laughs> Heck of a lot easier than you can ever make a million. <laughs> I mean, what, do you, what do you think? <laughs> you never going to make it. I can make it back. I made it once. I can make it back. So stick around and you'll make it again. It's hurting too much now. No, off we go. Yeah. So really, it's escape. Once you understand the motivation for death is escape, now we understand what the Torah is telling us. You know, the drug addict, what is he looking for? Escape. Get out of it. The dead drunk, the guy who drinks himself into a dead stupor, what's he looking for? Escape. You know, and the couch potato, in America they call them couch potatoes. He comes home, puts on the television, dong. <laughs> What's he looking for? Escape. He doesn't know how to live. He doesn't know how to get pleasure. They're all escaping. You lose your temper, you're escaping. When I want to escape life, I go to sleep. When I want to escape reality, I normally like hiking, like up a mountain and just seeing beauty. I read a book listen to music, read a book, or go outside. Or play my game on my cell phone. And I want to escape life and reality, I go into my bed and read a book. The answers for publication are read or watch TV. Uh, that's my business. There are many means to escape. Uh, stuff that I'd rather not go into on camera. <laughs> so, the first level of free will is don't escape. Think! <laughs> That's life! Think! What is my pleasure? What am I doing? Where am I going? What's life about? Did you ever pause a moment and say to yourself, what difference does it all make? And it scares the life out of you. Don't be scared. You're coming alive. What difference does it all make? Where are you going? What difference does it all make? I often think, uh, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Maybe there is no difference, but I sometimes do think there is a difference. I often ask, what difference does it make? Why? What's this all for? What are we doing here? And I ask myself that question, like, on a regular basis, but I pretty much try to avoid it as much as I can, uh, as well I think most people do, just because uh, most people can't handle answering that question. Just times when everything seems to be going wrong, like the dogs destroyed the house, you're out of money, you don't know what you're doing. The, the main problem I have is direction, where I'm going with my life. What do I want to do? What do I want to become? I never ever really thought about it. Usually after that kind of question, I usually get a hold of myself and get a grip on reality and say, it does make a difference because I'm alive and living my life. Ultimately, the fact that it doesn't make any difference is where the real difference comes. The only real change you'll make is in your own personal experience. And uh, ultimately, that's what's the most important. So, um, it does make a difference. It's all about attitude and how you uh, entertain your thoughts as you go through your life. That's the first level of free will, to think or not to think. Yeah? But that's only one level. The second level of free will is think again. Because when we have an answer, we think we've got the ultimate. We understand what love is. We understand what life is. We understand how to... Raise children. <laughs> it's an ongoing, it's a lifetime quest to really appreciate love, to really appreciate good, to really. It's a think again. And if you never heard about it, that's second level of free will. The third level of free will 
You know, we say shalom aleichem, inner peace. What's inner peace? Every human being is a, a, a volcano of conflict. Inside him, a volcano of conflict. On the one hand, he wants to be great. On the other hand, he feels like sleeping. On the one hand, he wants to use his time. On the other hand, he wants you to convince him that he's using his time while watching television. He knows he's wasting his time. On the one hand, he wants to help people. He wants to be, he wants to be good. On the other hand, he says, leave me alone. See, he's always fighting. There's always a fight. So when we say Shalom Aleichem, we're wishing each other peace, which means that your body passion gets into your soul's desire. That's the soul and the, and the body. The soul wants to accomplish. The soul is proud. The soul is powerful. The soul is full of joy. The soul says, life is gorgeous. The body says, leave me alone. Let me sleep. Comfort. Satiation. Just take away the pain. I, all I want is comfort. And this is a fight going on all the time. You go jogging. The body says, this is going to kill you. This is crazy. Your feet are going to fall off. Your head is going to burst. You, you, this is sadistic. Your soul says, come on, people do it. It's healthy for you. You keep on doing it. You'll get used to it. Now, if you quit, you quit running, you quit bodybuilding, you quit a diet, so for the moment you feel, ah, no more running. But you'll never make peace with the soul because the soul says, damn it, get a grip on yourself. Let's go, let's go, let's use our potential. <sighs> we'll never have peace. How do I feel when I quit something that I want to continue? I am um, disappointed with myself. I once quit piano, I would played for two years, um, I hated it, and now looking back I would have really liked to play piano, have a good hobby to do when I'm older. I wanted to go learn nursing and I decided not to go and it's very, it was very disappointing for me. I quit in the middle of the school year once in high school and my education is important to me and it always was and it really hurt me to, 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 to think that I had to do that. Well, on the other hand, if you diet down and you lost 60 pounds, you know, hmm, boy, the body says, ain't I great? <laughs> you keep on jogging, you know, you keep on jogging for six months and you don't jog a day, the body says, hey, you missed jogging, you know, I don't feel so good. Like, Come on, let's go out there. Yeah? The body will make peace with the soul, the soul won't make peace with the body. That's the third level of free will. When you got your body passion into the soul's purpose, when you're outraged by injustice, when you are, when you are absolutely lusting for truth, for life, that is peace. But there's even more. You see, in Judaism we say that free will, the righteous man identifies with his soul. The evil man identifies with his body. So when you look at Esau, Esau of Russia, you know, the son of Isaac, the brother of Jacob, who said, and says in the Torah, Vayomer Esau Belibay, his body is talking to his soul, and he says, when my father dies, then I'm going to kill my brother Jacob. King David is a good man. So King David says to his body, so the rabbis say, the righteous man identifies with his soul. The evil man identifies with his body. The Benoni, that's us, the schizophrenics, we, we confuse. We identify with our soul for a moment, we identify with the body. My body tells me to eat fattening stuff. My soul says to me, be true to yourself or you will never fall. That's a quote from the Beastie Boys. My body says to me, um, eat food, uh, stretch, um, chase women. My body always says to me, I'm so hungry, I'm tired, I need some more food. My body tells me to go to sleep. My body says to me, I need to go to the toilet, um, I need to do other stuff, uh, maybe naughty stuff occasionally. My body says to me that I should currently be going to gym. My body says to me stuff and my soul says, uh -uh. My soul says to me that 
there's not enough spirituality in my life and I need to devote my entire life to my spirituality. The soul tells me to wake up. Have you ever read Chicken Soup for the Soul? That's what my soul says. So the good man fights never to identify with his body. So when he says, I'm so tired, I can't, I can't study anymore, I can't stay awake, I, I, have to, I have to go to bed. He says, my body says, I'm so tired. My body says it is so tired, it can't function anymore, it's going to faint, it has to go to bed. Now, should I believe that notorious liar? How many times did it fool me? Yeah? Let's see, how much sleep did I get last night? Ah, I'm not that tired, shut up, get out of my way. Did your body ever tell you if you don't have that piece of cake, then you're going to faint? It's, that's exactly what you need in order to survive, that little piece of cake, that dessert, yeah? Don't say, I need that piece of cake. Say, my body claims that without this piece of cake, you're going to faint and hunger. Now, is that reasonable or is this another one of his notorious liar tricks? Shut up, your body. And you can promise your body good things. You say, listen, you listen to me and forget about this. And then at the end of the week, we're going to orgy. We're going to have cake and cake until it comes out of it. You know, don't worry. Your body is always lying to you, you know, just another five minutes and then you start studying, you work on the contract, <laughs> another five minutes, then the break for tea, break for this, break for that. You learn to talk to your body. Anybody who goes jogging knows how to do it, you know, you remember if you jog, you say, just until that tree. The body says, no, we got to quit. No, no, just, just until the corner. And then just another, another, another five minutes feet to the, the, the next tree and the body goes along so you got to learn how to talk to your body identify with your soul and then you're free then you're you're a man when my body's really tired and it just wants to stop and it doesn't want to get up and go I focus on the end goal and I I just I just realize that it can do anything that I put my mind to it my body's um, wanted me to quit studying so hard and I fought up by saying, you know, I kept saying like five more minutes, ten more minutes, you can do it. When my body wants me to quit, um, like for example, if I'm very sleepy, I drink a lot of coffee. It's kind of like a kung fu movie, like the final scene and and it's like the guy's got nunchucks and I'm like bare-handed and I have to, like my master's like voice comes into my head and says like, use the hidden crane technique. That's what I do. When my body tells me I want to quit, so I just turn it back, no pain, no gain. I don't fight my body. <laughs> my body, my body wants me to quit, then maybe for the sake of my body I should go with that. Just put myself in a mental state where I'm not thinking about any questions. When my body wants to quit, I tell it to keep going because at the end of the race, there is a nice dish of ice cream. Top level of free will. <clears throat> Top level. You know the Almighty loves you? You pray to God? You know that this world is a beautiful world? Ask yourself, what does the Almighty want? That's what you want. That's really what you want. What does the Almighty want you to do? How does the Almighty want you to treat your fellow man? How does the Almighty want you to treat the rest of his children? And you know, you can feel very good when you're living with what the Almighty wants, and it's powerful. Who does God want you to be? I don't know, you're going to have to ask him that. Uh, oof, if I knew the answer to that. <laughs> to a manifestation of your inner self, possibly? I think I have to find out who I want to be first. God wants me to be the best person that I can, whether that's a fireman or a ballerina, whatever it is. God wants me to be the best I can be. I really believe God just wants me to be myself and loves me the way I am. God wants me to best be the best person I can be. God wants me to be the best person that I can be. God wants me to be the best person that I can be. He doesn't want me to be anyone else that I'm not. He wants to be the best person that I can be. Do you have any questions or any comments, anything at all, we're interested. Please call.
Thank you.